Next chapter. <sighs> first date. Okay. First date with this new person. It's unknown and the nerves come. Yeah. Which is completely normal, which is completely is natural, natural to have. To, that's part of our humanity to experience being scared, to experience having those nerves. Mm -hmm. But how can we deal with those nerves? How can we deal with those parts of our humanity that come up, which sometimes make us feel constrained? Absolutely. And I said, there's nothing like dating. Mm. Doesn't matter how confident you are in other areas of your life. There's nothing like a first date to make people feel nervous and insecure. Yeah. And I also want you to remember, if that's how you feel going into a first date, think about how the other person might be interpreting things as well. So if that person does seem a bit nervous or a bit shy or isn't necessarily being their most swashbuckling or most charismatic self, can we start, can we all disagree for a second, to start giving each other a little bit of a break here and just assume that we are all human and we may be feeling a bit nervous. Mm. So in this section, we're going to be talking about before you go into that first date, how you can get into the right mindset around it. Then we're going to also be giving you some skills for body language and also how to create those good conversations. Because we know as dating coaches that something that people worry about all the time is running out of things to say. Yeah, definitely. So looking at mindset to begin with, because mm -hmm. uh, I think if you have the right mindset to, and the right attitude towards something, getting um, the right skills and the right practice and putting yourself across in the, in the right way becomes easy. Mm. So my best mindset for you, and I want you to write this down for that going into that first date, is to adopt the mindset of the interviewer and not the interviewee. Yeah. Uh, what do, well, I'd like, maybe I should have said co-interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we're going to kind of make it a mutual experience. Right, yeah. so what happens if you're in the mindset of the interviewee? You go into a date, and you might start to become very self-conscious, thinking, oh, you know, like, what if this person doesn't like me? What mm. if they reject me? What if I say the wrong thing? What if I book the wrong place? What if I do something awkward? So you're kind of constantly psyching yourself up to be judged, yeah. to be criticized. Um, and in doing so, you know what happens? You go into what we would call performance mode. Yeah. <laughs> so that means no longer are you doing, the, doing anything on the date because you enjoy it or because mm. you want to talk about it. You're starting to do all these things in the hope of maintaining somebody else's interest. Yeah, and to seek that approval as well. Yeah. And validation of someone who you don't even know yet. Right. So again, what a way to kind of exhaust yourself and get yourself all in the wrong mindset. Yeah. So instead, we want to get into the mindset of the interviewer. Mm -hmm. So for me, the interviewer is someone who is clear about what they want. Mm -hmm. And because they're clear about what they want, they're then able to really look out for those qualities in other people. They go into a first date like a bit of an exploration, mm. wanting to have fun, but also wanting to see like, mm, okay, does this person line up with me? Yeah. Now, on the way over, we had a little chat about this. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking about the idea of someone potentially being a match yeah. and potentially not being a ma match yeah, yeah. and how that isn't one-sided but that is in fact two-sided yeah definitely and it's important to um, really explore and uh, brainstorm you know the kind of things that you are looking for the things that will increase your interest in this person that you're about to meet as well as as well you want to talk about things that you actually are passionate about that are authentic for you that you actually enjoy exploring as well we can often find ourselves uh, feeling that we need to just talk about particular topics don't just have a silence don't have it. a silence yeah right. yeah exactly so you just talk for the sake of it and um in, in, with the idea of being this the interviewer uh, you did say a, a key point about having fun with that as well, so you're being playful with it. So it's not like, okay, I'm here to interview to you. you. What's your favourite colour? Is it, is it yellow? Uh, oh, no. no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's not like that. It's, it's meant to be this back and forth flow where you both are experiencing the exploration of being curious with each other, but around things that are of interest to both of you. But you don't know what's going to be of interest to that person but you only know what's of interest to you. So by you being able to share and bring up the things that you are interested in, you get to see, okay, does this person kind of line up with similar values, similar hobbies, similar interests as well as me? Or maybe there's things that they can, um, I can learn from them as well. Right, so if you are currently thinking, oh, I'm not sure if I'm a great conversationalist, mm. or I'm worried that my dates might be a bit flat because I'm not sure if I know the right things to say. Or actually a question that we get quite a lot are, what are the best topics of conversation? You know, what are the right things to talk about? 
And, you know, we've got some obvious ones that might not be so great, like talking about your work, which might put you across, unless you're very passionate about it, I say that, yeah. in a very professional way. Talking about ex-partners, but again, uh, could could be Maybe done. Maybe on a first date. No, you're not on a first date. <laughs> so there's some obvious topics which don't seem so great, and there's some topics which could be much better, like talking about stuff you're passionate about mm -hmm. and things you connect with. However, the secret recipe to figuring out what topics you should talk about on a first date actually goes back to you as a person and as an individual. Um, it begins with you recognizing, as Ash said, what if I brought this topic of conversation up and this other person shared that interest or that hobby, what topics of conversation would make me more attracted to them? So it could be that, for instance, you really love kind of going with the flow and doing lots of spontaneous travel. So you might want to introduce that as a subject matter to see if the other person is more or less in line with that. Mm, yeah. So let's say you've, we've, you've, you've done the prep, you've kind of gone through different content, different things that you might want to talk about, different things you want to explore with this person. Now, how would you go about meeting people in these social settings? Oh, is that another question? You it just is another, question. It is another question that's come up. Okay, well, this is, it's, it, again, it's kind of similar. I think a lot of the time people see people every day that they are attracted to and that they would like to meet. I bet right now you might, whether it's in a, you know, in the supermarket or on the bus or, uh, you know, a different event, you might see people around you all the time. And you'd be like, oh, I'd love to say hello to them. And the reason that we often don't is out of a fear that we're doing something that's wrong mm. or creepy or unwanted. Mm. And what we really see is this is another big area where people who could really connect miss out on the opportunity to have that connection. Mm. So I would say instead of thinking about it from that viewpoint of I need or I must have, so instead of thinking, gosh, I, how do I get that person's number or mm. I must approach them but I'm worried they're going to reject me. Mm. Again, let's not make it this, this doom and gloom or quite mm. this big and scary. Instead, if we can think about it in terms of I'm just quite a sociable person. Mm. I'm a sociable person. I am looking for opportunities in the environment around mm. me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really would like to just try and connect with a person. Mm. And if I try and connect with them, I'm gonna see how they reciprocate. Yeah. So if I was an art gallery mm. and I saw Ash mm -hmm. and I wanted to start a conversation with you, mm -hmm. I might just say, hey, mm -hmm. or excuse me. And then I, I might say, oh, I love how that artwork is mm. all a sea of green, this is a bit where you don't see I'm not an art fan. <laughs> now at that point I'd probably just pause and I'd wait to see, okay, is Ash gonna contribute? Yeah, and is I love gonna... the green and the reds and the yellows as well in this painting mm. here. I feel like the artist was trying to create a feeling of going through this journey of emotions. Okay, da, 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 a little da, bit more da, 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 of an art fan <laughs> over there. Um, so if we can see that, if you can imagine that's a social situation, mm. I'm not going up to Ash and being like, hey baby, what's up? Wanna give me your number? How you doing? How you doing? Joey. We're not going there. We're just gonna start a nice conversation about something you can both observe and see. Yeah. Then I'm gonna wait and see. If Ash reciprocates, great. Yeah. I'm gonna continue the conversation. If he doesn't, I'm just gonna wind that up and just say, you know what, have a really great day. Yeah. Which, and that's it. Which in this scenario, Haley has no control over. She has no control over how I am going to respond or, and what level of my receptivity is. So only be focused on what your effort is and what you can do. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to meet someone else in another social setting, to add to what Hayley's saying, is taking that first step where you do go over and say hi. Now, uh, for some people, it, that sounds very simple, and it, partly because it is, I can understand the, um, the pressure, the nerves, the, the feeling of it being unusual, Mm. and that may be there with you as well. And I would suggest any concern that you have about uh, being able to just break the ice with someone in a particular social setting, actually use that and call it out. So for example, if it's somewhere where, where you don't be? think it's... Hmm? Where are we gonna be, coffee so shop? Let's say it's a coffee shop, yeah. and so that's not usually a, uh, an environment where we usually have social permission to talk to someone. You may acknowledge and say, hey, excuse me, I know this is a bit unusual, but I wanted to just say hi quickly. I noticed you. And then off that, you get to see the level of receptivity from that person and whether you want to continue to extend or not. Right. So do you see we've got a bit of a theme here, guys, which is all about actually 
not looking for that immediate yes or to get someone's number or for them to definitely like you. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're just looking for you to take small actions to see if the other person mm -hmm. is open to the same level of relationship, whether that is a conversation in a coffee shop mm -hmm. or that long-term committed relationship as you want. So remember we were talking about how to be a great conversationalist mm. and what topics you should talk about. And we were speaking about what topics could you now choose or what could you think of that would make you more attracted to that person. Now, a common objection to this is uh, when I say to people, talk about what you like, talk about what you love, is most people go, yeah, right as if the other person is going to be into Star Wars. Or, or Dragon Ball Z. Z. <laughs> or computer science. Guilty. Oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, when we're talking about something we love, yeah. often we become our most attractive because our face lights up, we seem most passionate. Because of that, you're already going to be attractive. And if the other person, if I'm like, oh, my gosh, I just love Renaissance literature. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and you get it like a, you're just getting a blank there. Whatever you said, it wasn't connecting. You could then say to the person, well, you know what? Uh, you know what? You are missing out. Mm. I'm going to have to teach you about this. Mm. Okay. So again, you're coming from that mental and emotional space where your life is good, your life is awesome. You are the interviewer. Mm. And because of that, every topic and everything you talk about is just a filter and it's a way of seeing who is going to be on board to going on that journey with you? Mm. Who's going to make that effort to connect? Mm. And who do you just not quite have that kind of connection with? Mm. So let's say you, it, it's, you're on the date, it's going well, mm -hmm. you're both enjoying each other's company, uh -huh. the, question, the, the thought comes up, I wouldn't mind potentially seeing this person again. Uh. How would we go about securing a second date? That's another question we've got. Okay, another question. Um, so how do you go about securing a second date? Yeah. Now, I feel for, the, for whoever sent this in, because I do know there's probably quite a few of you out there who, has, who, as I mentioned earlier, have either received one too many of the I just didn't feel the spark message, the thanks but no thanks message, yeah. um, or you kind of express an interest and you just don't know really how to show that person that you're going to move on to that next stage of the process. So when it comes to securing a second date, there's kind of two factors in this. Factor number one is, are you communicating your intentions clearly? Are you putting it across? Are you being clear that you would like to see a person again? Because sometimes actually expressing interest doesn't make us look needy. It can make you seem very confident and very secure. And those are amazing, well, security is an amazing quality for a long-term relationship. So yeah. if we're on a date, I might say something like, oh, you know, I've just had a really, I've had a really great time. Or I've surprised myself. It's actually been really fun talking to you. Mm, yeah, me too. Um, so you, far. So, <laughs> <laughs> or you could say, for instance, um, you know what, I've had a great time. I'll send you a message, just check home, you, check you get home safe. Yeah or I'd really like to see you again, this has been awesome. Mm. If you're saying that, it doesn't make you look, I said, it doesn't make you look needy, it makes you look secure in what you want. And mm. for a long-term relationship, that's a beautiful quality. Clarity. Clarity is good. So thing one, have you got clarity? There is a second, there's another side to the coin though, which is how receptive the other person is. Mm -hmm. If you feel that you've turned up on that date, you have spoken about stuff you love, you've communicated yourself clearly, You've shown your intentions in a nice and secure way. That is the part of the date that is within your control. And that's the bit you want to take personal responsibility for. However, there is another half of the date which the other person has to take responsibility for, which is how open are they to that? How much connection did they feel? And where are they at in their life right now? So really, you need the stars to line up for them too. And a lot of that doesn't uh, rely on how amazing your performance was or how great you did. A lot of that is actually how they turn up to the date in the first place. Mm. Yeah, uh, we've got another question here actually from John. Hey John. And he's asking, is it okay to hold hands on a first date? Right, well, great. that's actually a really great question because mm. it's another one of those examples of, to some people, I bet when you heard that question, is it okay to hold hands on a first date? I bet some of you were like, Hell no. And some of you are like, yeah, that's really nice. Mm. Uh, so we've got to acknowledge here that different people are going to have a different expectation around whether holding hands feels comfortable to them or not. Mm. 
I am guessing from your question, John, that you are in the I love holding hands category. Yeah. Um, if that's you, I would suggest that you make an effort to try and see if that other person reciprocates. So again, mm. if I was sat here, um, we're gonna have to hold our hands up a little bit high, <laughs> yeah, on this imaginary <laughs> table. Um, I would probably, across the mm. table, I might start to just do a couple of touches mm. to the hand. And I notice, what, how would you react, uh, Ash, if you're not comfortable with this? Yeah. You would just, the other person would move their hand away or maybe like scrunch up the hand. Mm. If, however, you are touching and they seem really, and how would you show that you're comfortable? Your hands are quite soft. Oh, you do a little touch back. Mm. So from there, we can start to gradually, because we've got that positive feedback loop, move yeah. into holding hands. Woo, we've got a little squeeze there and everything. <laughs> um, so because of that, don't see it as a, there is a harsh rule around this. It's not one of those yes, no's. Instead, if you love it, and it would be nice for you, and you like that physical intimacy, then try out, try it in a little tiny baby steps and check for that feedback loop. Uh, and I'm glad we're on this, because I also want to bring up a little bit around confident body language. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, confident is a strong word, and this doesn't mean that you have to feel, be the most extroverted, self-confident mm. person. However, there is a relationship between our bodies and how comfortable we feel. Mm. So I want you to... That's another way maybe we could even say it. Yeah. Comfortable, like sharing comfortable body, body language, language as well as confident. And comfortable body language on that first date, mm. the experience that's going to give to the other person is it's going to help them to just relax, to know that you are comfortable and happy being there. And remember, the more relaxed we are, the more open we are, the more chance of that sparky connection because no one's feeling kind of too anxious and too het up at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so how would, should we do a little, yeah, we do sure. a little mini greeting? Yeah, come on, yeah. I've got my heels on as well, so I'm going to be nice and <laughs> nice and tall. And also, nothing wrong with dating something that's taller or shorter than you. <laughs> okay. Own whatever you have. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So, so should we do a, uncomfortable first? an uncomfortable okay. first meeting? And I bet you might have had one of these so far. So, for example, if I was really feeling awkward and uncomfortable, I may come up and say, hi, I'm Ashley. Hi. So, there's hardly any eye contact. Mm -hmm. There's it's a, rushed. A, a, yep, there's a distance here as well. I'm trying to get it over and done with. Not really savouring the moment there, right? No, right, yeah. Okay, and what does that say? That says, I'm not really comfortable being here within this moment. And also, you know, I'm not really sure how to handle this and I probably am finding this a bit intense. And those are all feelings that you might experience when you meet someone on a first date. But we just want to show you some body language, how you can deliver that in a way that shows that you're more comfortable. Mm. So if I'm, I mean, on, again, ah. first time. Hey, Hi. how's it going? Hey. Ah, oh, good to see you. Nice to see you too. Ah. So here, I'm being open. I'm allowing her to come in. I'm giving her two kisses on one side, one side. Eye contact. Eye contact's happening here as well. Now, equally, you don't have to have any of that. It might just be like, hey, how's it going? Right. Oh, right. good to meet you, right? Hey. And it's still here oh, being yeah. comfortable and confident with what you're expressing. You know, it's not a case of it, um, there's one right way and mm. there's one and there's no uh, blah, blah, and there's wrong ways. Mm. It's more about if you're a hugger, hug. If you're a handshaker, shake. If you like giving kisses, give kisses. Uh -huh. It's about doing what's going to be congruent to your self-expression. And then take it and doing that with eye contact. Yeah. And enjoy the moment because it's kind of a, this is how the spark is created. By the way, if you spend enough time looking at someone in the eyes, yeah. And you're close enough in there. But not. Whoa. But let's be clear about the eye contact as well. It doesn't mean it's like this. This could kind of put be a, bit, a little bit off. intense, right? Yeah. Okay, so we want to get that <laughs> balance, but actually having that closer physical proximity, having a bit of nice physical touch, mm. is one of the ways that we build that connection with people. It's actually a lovely thing, and all we want to do is to obviously be aware that, as well as whether you're a hugger or a handshaker, doing what feels good for you, we also want to witness the other person's reaction. So people will tell you through their body language if they are comfortable meeting you at that level, or if that's a level that doesn't quite connect with them. Mm. So for instance, do you want to go in for a, let's do a handshake mm -hmm. and I'm going to show a little bit of discomfort. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so what I might do is I might just back up a little bit mm. or kind of go into a little like T-Rex hand. Um, and restrict. All, restrict. Mm. And all that's communicating is, it doesn't mean that I'm never going to want to shake hands with Ashley. It just means that right now in this moment, I'm not fully comfortable. Mm. And if someone isn't fully comfortable, we just 
back out of their personal space. Respect that. Respect that, and they're going to be so much more comfy. So as much as having a great first date and getting past those nerves is about expressing yourself really well through your physical touch and conversation, mm. another part of it is also about really actively listening and showing engagement with the person that you happen to be on that date with. Yeah. So we can show this quite simply through a piece of conversation. Mm. So it's about showing a person that you've listened to them and that a date is really, it, remember, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. <laughs> So if you, can you give me a, uh, so we're gonna pretend that I'm on a date with Ash again. Sorry, we are colleagues, but this isn't, this isn't that awkward for us. Um, do you wanna give me a topic of conversation that could come up for you on a date? Uh, yeah, like um, I'm, I'm a massive fan of traveling. Okay. I love to go and explore different parts of the world. Okay, so our topic is travel. Yeah. So what we're gonna really do is we're gonna really notice and listen to the words that Ash is using, and then we're gonna repeat and rephrase the words back to the person. This could be saying something like, oh, travel. Mm. Oh, you know what? Um, I've actually just recently got back from doing a little mini break in Paris. It was the best thing. Oh, nice. Uh, I, can, I can see you though. I think you're gonna be more, I sense that you are more of a beach going type person. 100%. Right. Yeah, Sunsy. So, Right. Mm. So to show that we're listening to a person, we're really engaged with them, it isn't actually about doing what we would call the compliment bomb, which is saying, wow, you know, I like your jacket, and Thank I like you. your hair, Thank you. and, your, and your glasses, Thank and you. you're like your stylish, and I Thank like you. the way you speak. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> Immediately, by doing the compliment bomb, we come across like, again, like, I need you yeah. to like me that this interest isn't very... It sounds a bit insincere. It does sound insincere. Yeah. Because we haven't really... People-pleasing. Re exactly. And you're not a people-pleaser, remember? You're the interviewer, yeah. not the interviewee. Yeah. So instead, a much more effective way of demonstrating <clears throat> this is that we want to get you to actively listen mm. to the person. Mm. Yeah. So we've covered quite a lot there. We have, yeah, definitely. Uh, we've got one other question before going to the next chapter. Okay. Uh, and it's a question from... Nikai, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not too sure. My bad if I haven't. Um, he likes someone. Uh, he sees her um, often when mm -hmm. he goes to the library. Ah. He wants to ask her out. How can he do that? First of all, love a library romance. Who doesn't? Uh, and you can see someone ever, anywhere that you like. Um, the key thing here, again, is about baby steps. And it's about feedback loops. Mm. So rather than deciding you like her just yet, remember, you've just seen her. You haven't actually had that time to get to know her and to connect with her as a person. Mm. But you can start to give yourself that opportunity. Now, what I would do is I would sit probably a little bit close to the person or as they're in the queue checking out their book, mm. make a comment and say, ah, I see that you like Renaissance literature. <laughs> I'm more of a thriller person myself. Now, at that point in time, again, you know, this lady, she can just go, ah, mm, and just go about her daily life, and that's yeah. fine. You know, you've checked it out. Or she could say something like... She might offer some information such as like, oh, I'm not really into thrillers, but um, I did read uh, one time a Martina Cole book. Um, because my mum bought it for me for Christmas. Okay, and at what point then you can say, my name's Hayley, by the way. Oh, I'm Ashley. Awesome. Enchanté. Enchanté. So you swap names, and when you swap names, you got to start to feel a bit more familiar. If the other person seems comfortable with that, then this is the next basis. You can start up that conversation again with them the next time you see them. And then, you know, that will feel a lot more comfy to suggest swapping phone numbers after you've had that period of getting to know one another a little bit. Mm. Lovely jubbly. Uh, one last thing I want to add to what we've been talking about in this chapter about like dates and being able to deal with the nerves is to be, be able to give yourself the permission to feel nervous, mm -hmm. give yourself permission to feel scared and to feel however you're feeling in that moment. Yeah. So shall we summarise? Absolutely, summarise. Yeah. So going through this, remember we want to be in the mindset mm. of the interviewer, yeah. not the interviewee. We want to focus on having really confident, or should we say comfortable, body language. We want to show engagement with the other person. And in terms of what are good topics to talk about, it's a lot of the time it's actually talking about things that really connect with you mm. that are going to give you that natural filter to working out if you do have that match with someone. Yeah. So. Perfect, yeah. Next section. So, yeah, next section.